let's quickly get into it and uh, uh, just recap really on the president's speech uh, address yesterday. And he spoke on a number of, of things uh, highlighting mostly on the fight against uh, corruption. Would you say eight months after the UPND formed government, they have made strides in dealing with corruption? Well, thank you very much, uh, Justin. And, and uh, again, thank you for having me. Uh, I think the first thing to say is really just uh, maybe to commend uh, the president uh, for heeding, uh, you know, to the uh, to the cause for him to actually address the nation. I think that uh, the cause had become incessant. The fact that you know there were a lot of uh, uh, issues that were happening, and uh, we needed to hear uh, very categorically from from the head of state. So we do commend him, uh, you know, for uh, for rising to that challenge and addressing uh, uh, the nation in the manner that he did. Now, when you talk about uh, the strides that uh, the UPN administration has made with regard to the fight against corruption. Well, there's a number of things that we can look at. Um, I'm not sure I would call them a very huge strides uh, in that sense, uh, because uh, there are some things that have happened, but also there is a lot more that could probably have been done. And I think that uh, we'll get into the details of that as we go on. But suffice to say at this point uh, is, I mean, it is, it is very clear that uh, there has been some small steps that have been made in terms of, uh, you know, progress in the fight against corruption. For example, uh, the issue of uh, the first track costs that has been that have been established I think that uh, that is a very positive step uh, in the right direction and one that is uh, uh, hopefully that that is going to ensure that uh, you know we achieve the sort of progress that we need to achieve in terms of uh, prosecuting cases of corruption um, but also w w when you look at uh, the sentiments that uh, the president has been making uh, over the last uh, eight months and I know the question is always that you know is it good just to make pronouncements without backing them up uh, mm. with action but I think that uh, what those pronouncements are doing is that uh, they are giving a sense of their being political will, even when it comes to the fight against corruption. So in that context, then, you can say that, uh, you know, there has been uh, some movement of sorts when it comes to uh, to the positive aspects. Now, there are still, there, there is still a lot that can be done in terms of, uh, uh, you know, some of the, uh, uh, the gray areas that still remain. I mean, for us, one of the biggest uh, issues that we have had uh, over the last uh, eight months, and I, 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 I'll remind you also that uh, as TIZ, we did actually analyze the UPND manifesto prior to the elections, together with our, our manifestos of two other political mm -hmm. parties. And we were very keen to see what they said in terms of what they were going to do with the fight against corruption. And the disappointment that we have now is that uh, it does not seem that you know they are following uh, precisely what they put in their manifesto. I'll give an example of the issue of uh, the asset and liability declarations for uh, uh, ministers. Uh, the UPND were one of the key proponents you know, of the fight fact that ministers and other uh, you know, senior uh, uh, officials in government need to actually make those declarations public. And this is not something that has, uh, that has happened. So for us, we think that uh, there, there, is, there are some things that the UPND government has done in terms of fighting corruption, but there is still a lot more that really they could have done. And we think that uh, the one thing they have not done well is that they've not managed even to harvest what we call the low-hanging fruits, uh, you know, that that are available. And this declaration, ministerial declarations of assets and liabilities, mm. is certainly one low hanging fruit that, that they could already have harvested by now in order to demonstrate the seriousness that they have towards the fight against corruption. Yep. So I would say it's been here and there, neither here nor there. And so. It, it's been uh, slightly over eight months, and, and obviously the European administration being a uh, a, a government that uh, was formed not so long ago. They are still new in power, obviously trying to get a grasp of uh, what needs to be done. Would you say that there should be consideration of uh, them being given leeway, uh, especially now that they're a new government in power? Well, uh, I really don't think that uh, eight months down the line we should be talking about, uh, you know, giving them leeway because you need to, I mean, there are a number of things that you need to understand. The first is that uh, the UPND uh, administration or the UPND as a party was elected into government on the basis of the promises that they made to the Zambian people. And part of the promise that they made was that they were going to be different even in terms of how they are, in terms of how they are doing things generally. And that includes even the fight against corruption. So the expectations that are, uh, you know, that were placed on them were very, very high. Okay, and also you need to understand that part of the context also entails that uh, uh, Zambian citizens now appear to be a lot more 
a lot more aware, uh, certainly a lot more. When you look at, for example, the youths, they are cert there's certainly a lot more awareness and, and consciousness in terms of providing checks and balances. So there is a greater scrutiny that is on the UPN administration. So the onus really is on them to make sure that they rise up to the challenge and begin to actually uh, you know, implement the things that they say they were going to implement. So I don't think that uh, eight months down the line we can still be uh, talking about giving them leeway because I think that their honeymoon period is very much over. We said at the beginning of this year that if there was a honeymoon period for the UPN administration, then it was probably the first uh, three months or so after they, uh, they were elected into office. Beyond that, as we, get, as we got into 2020, one of the things that we were saying is that, okay, we have seen enough in terms of pronouncements, in terms of rhetoric, in terms of what is being said. And what we are looking forward to seeing now as we go through the rest of uh, this year is the actualization of a lot of these promises and a lot of these pronouncements that have been made. So to answer your question, no, I don't think that uh, right now is, is, is the time. I, I think that boat already sailed. We cannot still be giving them leeway. We need to start holding them accountable now for the things that they promised to the masses because otherwise we'll be talking about these things five years mm. down the line. Well, one of the things that uh, was brought up, obviously, a concern that has been raised by uh, the public is the case between the state and Mr. Milingolungu, who uh, disclosed an immunity deal made between him and the state, well, a few notable names that he did bring about. But the president uh, did conclude otherwise from yesterday's uh, uh, briefing. He, he did mention in his words saying that anybody that was involved in that is on their own. But what does this really say about uh, transparency from the investigative wings and the judiciary system? Well, I think it raises a lot of uh, a, a lot of questions, really. But also uh, being cognizant of the fact that this is a matter that is uh, in court, and so maybe there's only so much that we can say about it. But having said that, um, I think that the the Milungolungu uh, uh, issue was one that was really very hot in the uh, uh, amongst uh, even uh, citizens. And I'm very happy that uh, the president was able to address it. I don't know if um, what he said really is going to uh, put to rest uh, the speculation that has been raging uh, concerning that. But suffice to say that I think what um, uh, you know this whole episode has shown um, one of the things that it has shown is certainly that uh, there is room for us uh, uh, you know to improve uh, to improve to do legal reforms in order to improve certain aspects in terms of how some of these constitutional offices for example are operating I think that uh, it was very unfortunate what we saw in the media um, in, in the public domain rather uh, you know the sort of public spat that was there between the D, uh, the DEC and, uh, and and the DPP where you know the D, the DPP was asking the DEC to exculpate themselves as to why they were arresting somebody without, uh, you know, without their consent. Notwithstanding the fact that, uh, you know, the DEC or any law enforcement agency mm -hmm. actually do not need any person's consent to arrest anybody because the functions of uh, uh, investigation, the functions of arrest, and that of prosecution are very separate and are for a very good reason. So I think that uh, what this episode has shown really is the need for us to really uh, be very uh, uh, firm and strong in terms of the legal reforms that we are under or that we need to undertake in order to make sure that you know we bring some sort of uh, uh, alignment and some sort of order so to speak to the way that uh, these constitutional officers are operating because they do have an implication on how uh, you know uh, good governance is, uh, is, is is attained even for us as a country.